So today I will introduce cross-syncing and I will also talk about the new thing in MaxCon, MaxLinks. So throughout the days during the summer school, you already hear several times about typical shotgun proteomics experiments. But what's typically done during this workflow, we are losing the structural information. So to deal with this, one approach to add some cross sinker And what we know this cross sinker it will uh, retain some residues and then some residues that are very close. And then we can gain some information regarding the interaction or regarding the structure. But uh, because of adding the cross sinker the products are more uh, complex than the typical experiment. And as a result, the spectres are also a bit more complex. And this field generally we call is chemical cross-linking combined with mass spectrometry, and you will see several aberration in the field. So this is the uh, my outline for this talk today. So I will talk uh, briefly about the cross-linkers, and then I will tell what about this cross-link products, and I will introduce some computational aspects, how we can analyze this um, uh, mass spectra data. Then I will tell you about the max links, how you could, uh, what's happened there, and then how you can set your max link analysis. Then I will show some of the preliminary results that we are currently finishing for the uh, publication. And then I will finish with conclusion and output. So let's talk about cross link. Cross-linkers has certain characteristics and we can put them in the three different groups. So it could be about function and it could be length and then MS fissure. So in terms of functionalities, because they have the arms, the ending, and it could be the type of the reactive group that they are car targeting, it could be the same. So then we call them homofunctional, or it could be the targeting different cross, the different residues on your protein sample. In that case, it will be heterofunctional. And then we could also have different reactive groups, and then it could be two arms, so it will be bifunctional, and then it could be three arms, and usually the third one is used for enrichment uh, for before uh, MS analysis. And we have the length base. So because we have these two reactive groups, and then we may have some carbon chain between these two, and then it will either make them non-zero, there will be a bit different uh, apart from each other, it could be the zero, meaning that they are adjuvant next to each other. And the third one is about MS ratio. This is uh, mainly, most likely being talking. So we have two main feature here. The cross-linker can be remain intact during MS analysis, and then we call them non-cleavable, or the cross-linker can be cut into two half because of the lab I won, if it's actually true, it's true, it's true, it's so true. Uh, sorry, I won't say two. And then we will have uh, two part of the cross linkers. So let's talk about an example. So this is one of the commonly used example, and uh, it's called in abbreviations DSS. So it's homo function, homo functional because it has two arms and it's bifunctional because they are the same and they are so-called, uh, as a result, they also target the same uh, group. They are targeting the amine reactive groups. And this primary amines basically found in lysine and protein and terminus. And this is non-zero because these two reactive groups, different, they have a carbon uh, chain between them. And then we use the angstrom term on this case and in here we have 11.4, and this is non-zero cross-linker. And the third one is non-cleavable because we don't have any labile one in this spacer arm. As a result, this remain intact in our MS measurements. Let's talk about second example. The second example is DSSO. And this is homo functional, similar to before, because we have two uh, reactive groups, again, the same. Uh, again, uh, this, the same, we have two reactive groups, the same, and they are targeting lysine and uh, primary uh, protein and terminus. And this is non-zero because we have, again, carbon chain, but now it's a bit shorter than DSS. And what makes this cleavable, this labile one next to the uh, sulfic acid. And because of this chemical structure, it's being cut on MS2 level. 
Now we know the cross thinker. Let's talk about the cross think products. In the typical experiment, we have the single or ordinary or also know the conventional peptides, which there is no cross thinker attached because there was no cross thinker. And in our sample, however, we have different various products. And what we actually aim this cross-link peptide, cross-linker between these two peptides, because it tells us if there's any proteins interacting each other or the structure-wise, these two peptides next uh, very close to each other. And despite of our target was the cross-link peptide, we still have a lot of single or ordinary peptide. This is the most abundant. And then there are several, techno several techniques to enrich the sample. For instance, the experimental is doing the strong cation ion change or size exclusion and so on. In addition to this, we also have monolink peptides. They are type zero. Here we have cross-linker and the other arm remain uh, unreactive. and uh, is not attached to the cross-linker. And this gives us the monolink peptide. And in, you know that in mass spectrometry, we must measure the mass changes, actually I'm always that, and then we know what's the corresponding of mass shifts per particular cross-linker. And this DSS case for monolith peptide give us 156 Dalton difference. And could be also a loop link, meaning that we have a cross-linker and we only have one peptide and cross-linker is attached with these two arms. Again, we know the mass shift, it will give us a bit less because the second arm is also linked. Another type, yeah. type is cross-link peptide, and here it's also called interpeptide. It's inter because we have two different peptides and cross-link by using a cross-linker. And the mass shift is again known for every cross linker times. And in addition to this already complex sample, the sample can be even more complicated. There could be also multiple modification, meaning high order. So it could be the combination of several types, monolink plus the cross link and so on. So how we can analyze this already complex, already complicated sample by in computational wise. So we know that this, the spectra if it's non-cleavable, imagine in this case scenario, our spectrum will contain the peaks coming from uh, both peptides. And we have a bunch of MS data sets and we search against the cross-link database. And here it's important the type of cross-linker. If you use non-cleavable, in the beginning it's being introduced non-cleavable and it was working for purified protein samples. Because uh, it's non-cleavable, the every uh, there's a possibility one peptide can be linked in other peptides. So as a result, we have exponential resource space for uh, the database. And uh, for these purposes, we use mostly purified sample and only purified sample if I'm not uh, In order to reach the proton wide or large scale, we do the MS cleavable. And it allows us to uh, somehow deal with this source space. And then you can go to more proton wide scale. So we have the search database. And then there are several different already existing tools out there. So they have all different uh, in terms of their function, the scoring engine, or how they approach to the target, uh, how they approach to the database source space, and so. But in the end, what we have, all the search engines in common, a list of cross-linked peptides matched to the spectrum. So this cross-linked peptide to spectrum match also known as CSM. And you will have this result. And then from this result, you can go to the number of cross-links. So when you know number of cross-links, you could go, if you know some protein structure available, use the 3D. Um, version in terms of pymol or chimera, and then you can measure the distances because what we know cross linker impose certain correct certain distances, and then you can see if it's actually meshing on your structure. 
so what what is this? There? So uh, between these two, we measure between this car two carbon atom, and then we use call this occluding distances. And there's also several uh, very cool tools out there that you could already use when you have this list of identified lists, like uh, ProXL or XI or XVIS. And then here you could get information how the cross linkings happen uh, within one protein, if it's within one protein, it's intra protein cross link, or it could be between different cross link, different protein. And then it will call interprotein crossing so it will tell us what was happening on the sample and you could have a better visualization of uh, the cross is happening so in the end goal of all of this for you to enable the predicting structure or protein protein docking so this information can be complementary to the other structural biology techniques such as Kyra EM, EM and then you will uh, improve if we will it will help us improve our findings if you remember yesterday uh, during Rudy's talk there was also some part they were mentioning about cross thinking so it's it's also shown that like it's this is being used at the moment in the field and it's getting more attention uh, because we could understand more and more about the protein structures and protein interaction with this field. Now let's talk about the mass links. So mass links is a new thing. Uh, so I was working on this a while. So I'm so happy that I'm showing this at the moment. And mass links was already integrated into the max quant workflow. So here, uh, you will see it will start with a similar process. And then there's a step called combine API for crossing. When you enable the crossing module, it will add also this step. So it will, it will be very similar to the, uh, the previous. And then you will also notice in the end, uh, we have one under model folder for conventional searches, but now we also have under model two folder. The content is very similar, but in this under, under Media 2 folder, we have also identification results containing crosslink peptides. And you won't find this information on your under Media folder. And then we will again do the uh, searching and then we will do F FDR calculation. And in the end is we write the tables. And on your combined TXT file folder, you will now find crosslink MSMS table. And then here it contains information uh, for the crossing peptides and also the single peptides. So all that we include our searches for cross-thinking will be in there at giving FDR. So Max uh, links already integrates in the workflow. So the basic workflow, as you may already remember the previous uh, session, we have the 3D or 4D MS1 feature. The thing has been already existing here on this workflow shown in gray. The new things that added for cross-linking shown in blue. So why is it 3D? Why is it 4D? 4D, as you may remember on the team store, we have ion mobility dimension that you can also mention in one of the max quant basics. And that's why we say 4D feature. This is the fourth dimension. And after this, we do some peak refinement. And again, we do the conventional approach. And then we start with crosslink peptide search. And then we do our FDR. Now let's check about peak refinement. So here's one example. Uh, we know that crosslink peptide, because we have two peptides and they are heavier than the typical peptides. And for this reason, for these heavier peptides, they, we, we might not um, absorb, we, we, the peak detection didn't work properly. And then when we enable the peak refinement, the, the precursor MOVZ, the night correctly, ident correctly defined, and then it gives us the correct identification. So MAX links can identify peptides by either non-cleavable or MS-cleavable approach. So what do we mean by a non-cleavable? So we have two peptides, the cross-linker one non-cleavable, and here on this MSMS simplified spectrum, we could see that the peptides 
uh, the fragment ion coming either from blue peptides or yellow peptides, or because the crosslinker remain attached, the cut might be here. So as a result, we are having the fragment ion containing these two peptides. So they are shown in this here. And uh, so in this non-cleavable crosslinker search, we, uh, the prepare source step will take longer than non-MS cleavable. In this case, we don't do any heuristic approach at the moment, and then we create the database containing all possible crosslink peptides. And the second module will allow you to run MS cleavable crosslinker. We have two approaches to define the peptides. So what happens when we have a crosslinker peptide that crosslinkers, they have two led by one, as you may remember in the previous day. As a result, these two peptides will give us four different products. And then we could see them on our MSMS spectrum. And what's known because of this crosslinker, they have certain delta masses. And since we know these delta masses, and then we know also the precursor, we can find out which are these peptides and then search uh, against this crossing peptides and give the scoring for this case. As you also see the second different thing compared to the non-cleavable, our fragments ions are either uh, blue or uh, yellow because uh, the fragmentation coming from one of these peptides. So we don't uh, have this two peptides still linked to each other because the crosslinker cuts. As you may guess already in, uh, as a scientific scientist heads that we don't always see this four signature peaks on our spectrum. And there are several studies, some studies show that we can take also top and intense. So what they find out that on this MS, MS spectrum, we have top intense peak and then if we choose between this uh, top three intense peak, we can assume, okay, this could be peptides with a smaller crosslink peptide. And then we can find out the possible crosslink uh, cross peptide involved. And then we can still get identification. It handles us basically for missing signature peaks cases. These are the key features happen. But behind of this search, we still use the Andromeda scoring function, but we adopt it because there are two peptides and then there's different strategies involved in this case. For non uh, target decoy, we calculate the R posterior error probability similar way to the non conventional searches, but we did a few changes. So instead of introducing the peptide length, uh, we introduce a partial score. And then later I will tell what partial score is. And then instead of using the miscleavage number, we give the biggest between these two peptides, the miscleavage number. And uh, for the wrong, in the crossing peptides, we say that it could be decoy decoy or decoy target with the R wrong hits. And then our FKI calculation is very similar, like conventional still. And then number of decoy divided by number of target will give us the FDR. And we calculate the FDR for every crossing uh, product types. So mon uh, monopeptides and dipeptides and single peptide, they are calculated separately. So now let's see how we do it on the MaxCon GUI. So we have a new group specific parameter. It's called crosslinks. And I told you that we have non-cleavable and also MS cleavable. And here you can choose it. You can choose non-cleavable or cleavable on MS2 spectrum. And then you could choose a crosslinker. At the moment, we, I mean, current, uh, we are supporting all possible B functional crosslinker. And then you can configure them on the configuration panel. And then you can configure your crosslink products types. And these are some of the scenario that might explain what was happening over there. 
So you can leave this setting as default. You don't need to change it unless uh, you want to uh, explore some other feature. And the second thing, if you want to use the MS clippable, it will occur here. You could change on the MS2 clippable. And then the crossing curve will be chosen based on this cross MS clippable type. And if you want to include this intensity-based strategy, there's an option to kick at the click and then you could also choose this default and intense pick as well. So how you can configure the cross linkers uh, is similar to how you can configure the other uh, modification or proteases. It's very similar GUI, similar, back, uh, similar uh, interface. We again gave the name, description. What was the composition when two peptides cross linked or the loop link is also because what's the composition when two arms of the cross linkers attach? And we call this linked. And what is the composition that we add when the cross linker one arm is attached? And then for the first uh, specificity, the first reactive group, what which amino acid they are targeting. And then which position they are targeting. Are they also targeting the protein and terminus? You can add this per each reactive arm. And then you could uh, enable this MS clippable feature if your crosslink is clippable. And then you need to tell what was this long part and the short part on the crosslinker after cut happens. You can simply enable peak refinement on the miscellaneous stop by clicking refined uh, peak, but uh, click uh, tick box. And then you should remember to change some of the default settings on MaxCon for your cross linking. First of all, the, uh, this maximum miscleavage number default is two, but it's commonly used in the cross linker field is three. So it's recommended to change to the three. And you should also uh, change this maximum peptide PEP because uh, this, Dalton, this Dalton value is 4,600, but on the crosslink peptide, they are heavier and you should change it. And then you can change the 600. And then if you want to include the contaminants, please include them on your pasta file, but deselect this option here. And the second thing, if you are running TeamStop data, uh, this default maximum charge needs to be a bit high, uh, higher because its default is four. So you will miss some of the other high, highly charged precursor, uh, highly charged uh, crossing peptides. After your identification ends, there is a panel where you can inspect your crossing peptides. So it's very similar how you can inspect your ordinary peptide, but here we have crosslink MSMS panel. And then you need to, here, this crosslink MSMS panel. And then you need to go to MSMS spectra. And then here is the peptide sequences. You need to go to one of the peptide, one of the line. And after this, you have to say display selected spectrum. And then it will show us how the spectrum uh, looks, and then it will show us also how the peptides link and what was the fragment ions are formed. And the red is coming from the first peptide, and these are the Y ions, and then you could also see them. Red, the first peptide, and in, in the cross linking literature, the heavier or longer peptide known as alpha. And then here you could also see it. The bigger, the heavier one, the, the first peptide known as alpha, and the blue ones are coming again. The first peptide, but B ions. And then we have the second peptide, the purple one. And in the literature, this second, the longer, the shorter or lighter crosslinks, the lighter peptides, it's known as beta. And then you could also see the, uh, the B ions, it's in green. So now we know about the cross linking and we know how you can enable the max links for your searches. Let's check some of the results that we are currently working. 
So I tested the max links in three different uh, data sets. And then the first one was use the synthetic data set. This has been published from Beverica, uh, uh, from Carmechter group at that time. And then what they did, they synthesized some peptides and they make 12 group. And then for each group, they did the cross-linking. So here on this figure, we could see this is one peptide group. The peptides are in blue. And then this is the second peptide group. And this is a third peptide group. They allow cross-linking within only this peptide group. So in the end, the cross-linking only happened between the blue ones or orange ones or green ones. And then they introduced, they, they mixed them and they introduced them on the MSMS spectrum, uh, mass spectrometry analysis. And then they say, ah, the possible combination that cross-link search engine can find will be between this, the same colors, but the impossible combination will be if the cross-link is a peculiar, the search engine find cross-link coming from these two group because there was no cross-linking occur between a green and orange or yellow and blue. And this data set also allow us to work without relying the protein structure. And then uh, they already compare several uh, softwares by giving the similar the, uh, very fair, data, fair settings by the researcher. Uh, the similar, they try to keep the similar setting as soon as much as possible, and they remove some of the cross linker specific filtering function as well. And they reported the number of cross link, correct cross links, number of correct, correct uh, CSMs, and the number of incorrect ones. And the data set has been generated by non cleavable and also MS cleavable uh, cross linkers. And currently, after the publication, it has been used a couple, by a couple of other softwares as well. So here is we are seeing the result on one of the non cleavable data sets. So the left side is number of CSMs cross-linked to spectrum meshes, and the right one is the number of cross-links. So the blue represents the correct ones, the correct identification found within the peptide group and incorrect is otherwise. And the y-axis, we see the max links, our latest software, and then this uh, open pepixel, which is the recently published cross-linking algorithm for non cleavable data sets, and three other cross-linker, P-Links uh, 2 and Starworks and XI. For this non clippable data set, they have three replicates and they are all shown uh, R1, R2, or R3. So the left side, we see the number of correct cross links. On the right side, it's a, a, a CSMs. Number, the, on the left, we see the number of CSMs. On the right side, we see the number of unique cross links. And this result comes from FDR1. And then compared to the other uh, search engine for this data set at the moment, uh, is MaxLinks finding the highest number of CSMs, also highest number of crosslinks at FDR1. So uh, there are this differences between the search engine can be also explained by the, the differences, how they handle the scoring or how they do the database, uh, constructing database and so on. And the second one, uh, we also tested on the synthetic data set where they use DSPU and DSSO. These are two different MS cleavable data sets, and they only have one replicate for each. And then here is the max links again on the top, and then they use Merox, and then they have two different settings in the Merox, and they put this result. And X-Links is another cross-link search engine algorithm. And this uh, plots for the number of cross-links and uh, Merox and Maxlinks are very, sim very close, but in overall, if they are one person, we report the highest number of correct cross-links. 
we didn't only test it our data set on synthetic peptide, but we also tested on Timstof. So this data set was generated by Florian Bush from Burke, and he uh, tested, he ran the bovin serum, serum albumin. And then here he used the MS cleavable cross sinker, DSS2 and DSSO. And uh, in order to challenge the data analysis part, we contain the database for proof of proteins. And this figure is shows one of the pyrococcus, pyrococcus. And pyrococcus is a bit special because it's very extreme. And then it has been already shown it's a good entrapment data set to assess the false and uh, true. And in our uh, challenging part, uh, we have BSA, and then we have 500 this protein. If we find any mesh coming to BSA and PUFU or PUFU, PUFU will be truly wrong. And if the settings was the default that you will find, I only changed the team store charge from four to six. And similar to the other search on the max count and the crossing MSMS table, uh, you could also see this cross cross section information specific to the team stuff. Uh, in the end, so for each data set, I check what was the number of the CSMs that I find at FDR 1%. And what was the number of intraprotein cross-linking between this BSA I find? So incorrect ones, there was only one or two, and we have more than 200 CSMs, and my FDR was one, so it was going well with my FDR rate. So it was accurately analyzing the team stock data set. And this one incorrect CSMs actually come from BSA and PUFU. And we know this entire proteins are, could, are a, a bit trickier in terms of this false assignment too. And from this result, I calculated the unit crosslinks and I also checked what was the unit crosslinks between BSAs. And then it also goes well with FDR. So, the last you may also ask, okay, you have this uh, max things works well and the non cleavable works well also the smaller data set for MS cleavable, what about the large scale? So I found one of the large scale data sets from uh, Andreessen's lab, which was available on the Pride. I also used some other, uh, other search engines uh, very recently. And then uh, in this data set, they have Drosophila. And then they have three biological replicates and they, they use different databases and they recommended using one of the databases. And I performed the same, uh, very similar to settings and my default max things settings. And here we see the first row is uh, coming from max links and the second row comes from Merox. So in terms of number of CSMs, max count is finding more than Merox and then in terms of unicrossing is also finding and intra works well, but for the intra protein crossings, we are finding a bit less. And I also not just comparing this number solely, but I also check what was this cross links, how they are reproducible between this three replicate, because I have three replicates. And on the left side, we could see that the overall uh, between these three replicates was 18%, but uh, it sounds like a bit less. Although when you check this publication, you will see that authors found the overlap between this Merox was 15%. And they also say that it's acceptable because there are three biological replicate and there are some changes to something about also the cross-linking experiment. And I also check the differences, uh, the overlap between the max count crossing and max links crossing and also Merox crossing. So uh, one third that's found between this all two data, two softwares can be found uh, in, in the chat. So with this, I want to say that crossing has become more rich in lab in the wet lab and there's already amazing the tools out there and max things will give you an option to effectively search cross-link peptides. 
And we already have very cool things about the fissure detection and we improve our fissure detection even more, particularly for these cross-link peptide cases. It works for non-cleavable and also MS cleavable data sets. It's freely available. And after going through this, uh, the how I set the settings, I am, I, I am almost sure that you can run it without any problem. And it's already integrated to the workflow. I already tested on the Windows and Linux, and you can run it on either of them. So our story won't end up here, but we will continue working on the cross-linking. So in terms of, I will add some second cross, second peptide search, and then we want to improve this overlapping by using the mesh between runs and also some machine learning tools also to improve our identification. So. We, 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 we plan to submit our manuscript as soon as possible. So please stay tuned for our updates. With this, I want to thank you all the Cox Lab members, Florian from Brucker uh, for testing uh, intensively and giving all these cool hints about the, his finding and also for the BSA and Naga and Barbara also uh, to giving always uh, some, uh, some more to learn about the experiments and also the software, some other software. And I want to thank, of course, EU because this is my Mercury grant and thank you.